Uh, this is my first time uh, speaking as a former official, and this, I have to say it's somewhat liberating. And it's sort of uh, appropriate because four, roughly four years ago was the last time I had spoken just prior to joining the uh, White House. And so there's a good, uh, with Nick actually, uh, and some other colleagues. And so it was, uh, there's a nice, uh, uh, nice uh, uh, cyclical nature to this, I suppose. Um, I guess let me start with a few comments and then I'll kick it over to Nick. And then maybe he and I can go back and forth on a discussion about these important issues. Uh, first and foremost, if you're gonna, at least from my perspective, if, you're, if, you're, if there's only one takeaway for today's discussion, it should be this. Uh, and that is that there is enthusiastic bipartisan support for the tech, uh, for tech modernization issues throughout the federal government, um, both during the uh, Obama administration and during the Trump administration. And now as we enter the Biden administration, uh, these have always been issues where unusual coalitions and, and, and teams have been able to come together that seemingly can agree on, on little else to try to advance what's in the best interest of our country. And I see no reason uh, to, I see no reason for that, um, for that to discontinue as we head into the Biden era. Um, and uh, so uh, that I think is the most important message of the day. Um, my uh, personal opinion, as we look at kind of the different chapters of working as those of you I'm sure who are watching today know, this has been an issue that has challenged the federal government for some time. Progress has been made, but the challenge remains. And so I think it's a fair question to reflect on, you know, what is, where are we in this moment uh, and what does it look like going forward? Um, at the sort of highest level, when I think about uh, tackling um, modernization and leveraging technology to improve the quality of citizen services, I, I break it down naturally in sort of three chapters. The first chapter being at the, in the primarily in the Obama administration, which was the uh, sort of initiation of these as of institutional efforts to drive this nature of change, the creation of USDS, the creation of TTS, the creation of the Presidential Innovation Fellows, et cetera. In fact, even over on Congress, while slightly unrelated, the Congressional App Challenge was created about that time. Um, when we came in roughly four years ago, we made the decision to double down on this progress. And um, rather than sort of try and reinvent the wheel, we wanted to uh, build on the progress that had been made of course, adding lessons and hopefully evolving the programs through our tenure. Um, but that nature of continuity would give us the opportunity to, uh, to deliver some positive outcomes for the country. And so I kind of label that era, the Trump era, as sort of institutionalization of it. So you have the initiation and then the institutionalization. And when I look from now and into the future of the Biden era, I see an opportunity, really what I hope is to scale those efforts. Uh, and early indications out of the Biden proposals seemingly from my perspective would indicate that. You saw, um, you may have seen the proposals for funding increases at TTS, USDS, uh, and the Technology Management Fund, uh, which were created by the combined work of the uh, previous two administrations, but take those funding up into the billions of dollars. Uh, so a program that was dealing with $15 million could have 300 million, et cetera. Uh, and so I'm very uh, bullish and very optimistic about the early signs that I've seen coming out of the, of the new team. And I'm hopeful that this spirit of collaboration and consensus will continue. But with that, maybe I'll pause and uh, hand it over to uh, the eminent uh, and one and only irreplaceable Nick Sinai, who I'll say on a personal note, is one of the finest public servants out there. Um, he's been in the private sector for far too long. So hopefully one of these days they'll loop him back in. But uh, Nick, take it away. <laughs> Lottery will get you nowhere, Matt. Um, but I would like to welcome everyone and, and echoes Matt's comments about that these, these set of uh, um, policies um, are, are bipartisan and, and nonpartisan um, and, and that it, it really is from one administration to another, uh, a set of handoffs and building upon the lessons. And um, because most of the hard work, almost all of the hard work is done by the uh, tremendously talented career and uh, term uh, folks who come in for shorter terms, uh, but are not political appointees either. And so um, it, it, it is a continuing building and evolving, right? I think uh, we, we continue to learn things as, as a community about what, what works and, and, and what should be, should be tweaked. Uh, but everyone can, can um, get behind um, more efficient, more effective, uh, um, more user-centric uh, um, services. That ultimately accomplish the the program. 
uh, or the mission that that it set out to do, right? And so um, the the thing that I would I would add is it feels a little bit like we're in our uh, teenage years, you know, uh, in terms of there's that that awkward ad- adolescence of we have a number of of um, good things uh, like the U.S. Digital Service 18F and PIF. Uh, we have a number of innovation labs and 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 other reforms on the hiring and procurement front, uh, even some work on the certification and security front, but still a long ways to go on, on a number of those, those, those areas. And yet we really have to scale across the, the uh, several million folks that are inside the executive branch, right? And so there's, there's just a massive opportunity set. And so how we, how we scale um, means that we, we really need to move away from, from the bespoke and, and to, to things that, that, that can scale. Um, and so one of the things that I've, I've been thinking about with a number of uh, existing um, uh, civil servants and, and people who have been in the government tech and civic tech communities is how do we make sure the next generation, Generation Z is included? Um, and the, the statistics are actually not very good. I think it's 3% of the federal IT workforce is under 30. Um, and it, it's just, we, we don't have uh, enough of, of um, Generation Z in federal service and, and in technology, design, data science, so forth. And so I'm, I'm really passionate about uh, this idea that I've been working on called the digital core, uh, which I, I, I hope Matt will join me in, and it'll become a bipartisan uh, type of thing. Um, but it, it's really about how do we, how do we get um, college age technologists to come into government uh, for a couple of year uh, tour of duty. Hopefully some continue on in federal service and others will, will kind of go back to, to school or, or, or into the private sector or those kinds of things. But I, I do think that, that we are, um, we've moved past the kind of uh, savior complex, the solutionism, the, the uh, excessive focus on technology as opposed to uh, also understanding how are we going to modernize some of our processes and, and, and um, especially on the acquisition and, and talent side. So it's, it's recognizing that the, these are, are, are bigger problems than, than uh, just a couple smart engineers, which are definitely needed in, in the ecosystem. But we, we have rooms for all, for all kinds of, of folks to, to make an impact here. So I'll, I'll stop there and, and, uh, Ask, let me ask Matt you a question: Is uh, what what are you most proud of, and 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 what what did you feel like you did get done in the past four years? Well, it's, I guess the most um, pride is difficult thing, I, only because there's so much. Uh, but I think what my my initial instinct to react to that question has been would be to say that I'm most proud that I think we largely kept these issues apolitical. And as I think any observer could say, these are very challenging times for a nation's politics and a nation's civic uh, culture. Um, and yet, throughout that entire process, uh, I believe that these issues, at least from my perspective, have remained largely apolitical and have, be- have been um, uh, a place where people of goodwill could come together and work to make a difference. And some of those people would, might have wildly different political views or ideological views, but they share a common intention to try to make things better. And uh, I see that throughout the civic tech programs in particular in the federal government and elsewhere. Uh, and I, I, I have some measure of pride, I suppose, whatever contribution that I may have had, uh, but certainly the team of people that I had the privilege to work with, uh, the term hires, the fellows, the you know people like Matt Cutts and others who have leaned into this challenge. Because I think there's a different there's a different uh, scenario where December 2016, March 2017, there was, a, there was a fracturing in the civic tech community and sort of everyone left and went one way and the other people went another way. And instead, I think, despite the considerable and honest differences we may have had in other areas, this was something that has kept, has kept the country together. And that's the reason I'm ultimately optimistic about our ability to achieve something long term here. There's nothing more powerful and impactful than American consensus over time. Uh, and you, one just has to have a casual review of our nation's history to see that. 
Um, I think a second area um, in terms of, I guess, my uh, to be uh, no, about pride, um, it's just a word I struggle with, I suppose, as someone from the American West, but <laughs> is the, and it's not perfect, and I think it's something that there needs to be continued work on, but we are always trying to build a culture of team as it relates to whether it's the career civil servants, uh, political appointees, term hires for their technical expertise, uh, the vendor community. Uh, and certainly I'm speaking very specifically about the civic tech world here. I think we were able to hopefully encourage more of that where we don't look at each other as sort of uh, competing equities, but that we realize that everyone has a valuable role to play in a virtuous cycle of progress, whether you're a vendor, a civic uh, term hire, a uh, career federal employee, or an agency leader. And it, it, obviously it's not perfect, but I think generally speaking, that virtuous cycle is underway and you're starting to see some of that continue into the Biden administration. Uh, as you well know, Nick, uh, anytime you work in the public sector, uh, there's always the unfinished work of the next chapter. There's never sort of a clean break point, um, even under the best conditions. For me, I think uh, the next frontier that I, I'm optimistic that they'll continue to impact is taking the capabilities and institutions that you know, two administrations work together to create and delivering large scale enterprise changes to the customer experience throughout uh, the high impact service providers that have been identified by OMB. Um, you think about the amazing work that you know, Charles Worthington and, and uh, Marina and a whole bunch of other people did for the VA and sort of uh, improving the VA.gov experience in a very meaningful way and taking that as a model to go agency by agency by agency across the federal enterprise, I believe is it possible. I think you're seeing early indications that that's the approach more or less that the Biden administration will take, uh, but I'm excited to see what they're able to do with it. Uh, pivoting back to you, uh, maybe I'll throw the question your way and sort of say what sort of, well, I'll give you maybe, an, I'll give you an opportunity, even though it's been some time to talk about pride. <laughs> But to make you equally uncomfortable, but uh, let's talk about the Biden administration and uh, let's talk what, about what, yeah. What do you see as uh, opportunities for them? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think one of the things you can see from from the agency review teams, like the folks that that had served on those, um, was uh, intense focus on on delivery, right? And so, um, and I think this is this is important for for the policy crowd that is assembling today is that uh, you know, policy is incredibly important, uh, but it doesn't mean a whole, whole hell of a lot if it's not implemented well. And so the, this whole notion of, of how uh, beneficiaries, veterans, students, uh, underprivileged uh, uh, populations or underserved populations, all these people, how they actually feel uh, and how they experience the, the particular uh, government program um, that's tremendously important. And I think that's one of the things that, that I've been excited to see in the past decade has been this maturation of, of um, digital experience, customer experience. Um, and in fact, we, we have different guilds running around in government, right? We have a whole set of CX folks. We have digital service uh, and delivery folks. We have, we have, have, which includes a number of designers. There's the behavioral scientists that tend to take a kind of longer, more statistical approach, but they're all pushing towards really uh, uh, making the, the end user, their needs, the, the North Star. And that's ultimately how we have to design and modernize our systems around and, and, and ultimately uh, ensure whether we are effective and try to reduce some of the complexity of government. Um, and so I, I, I'm excited about that consensus and, and the opportunity for these different guilds uh, across government to continue to kind of um, come together on on making the 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 end user the the, the north star and I, and I do think it gets to how we talk to the American public too because ultimately that's you know whether they're recipients of of uh, food stamps or 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 you know whether they're trying to get a federal job or they're visiting a national park whatever the, whatever the the thing is. Uh, that's the most tangible thing that we can um, deliver for them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, the, um, you know, I think generally speaking, there's maybe I'll, I'm a danger of going a little uh, high level here, but there, there's so much 
when you go to issue by issue in our, pol our political culture or policy communities, there's more than enough opportunity for disagreements, but I feel like the civic tech community has somehow remained this beacon of hope or this beacon that you know, it's a better way is possible. Um, and I know that's something the, the president spoke about in his inaugural address about finding ways to work together. And I, so for those of us that are sort of in the civic tech community um, and as, in the IT community, as, as funny as this may seem, I actually believe that we can sort of hit outside of our batting uh, average or, you know, uh, we really have an opportunity to show that people of goodwill can work together and achieve outsized impact, not only in the projects we're working on directly, uh, but on the very thesis that this kind of work is possible at all. And uh, as I say, I'm tremendously optimistic. I have an amazing amount of confidence in the, in the names I've heard so far uh, in this area and in the work and rumors and, and buzz that I've been hearing. Uh, and I just cannot wait to see what they're able to achieve. Uh, I, for one, as you and others were gracious enough to do for me, uh, will you know, be at the ready to help them any way I can uh, from my new perches and, and roles. I'm sure you feel the same way, Nick, but um, I think I would encourage anyone as sort of a call to action who's watching this today. You know, we each, no matter where we are, whether we're, we're in the White House, at a vendor, USDS, a PIF, or TTS, uh, or anywhere in between, we all have the opportunity to make a difference in this. Uh, and it begins by recognizing that each of us come from a place of good faith. Uh, and I know we're up on time, so maybe I'll wrap there. Uh, and Nick, I'll let you close it out. No, no, that was that was that was well said. We still have a lot of work to do. I'm excited about the 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 friends and and colleagues and and new faces that are coming into the Biden administration. It really is, is a, a diverse coalition of talented people, many of whom no government and, and no technology. And so I'm I'm so excited. Uh, um, there will obviously will be be some some changes, but we'll we'll get to those, I guess, in a in a future. Uh, session and and uh, I guess we're coming up on time. So thank you for for having us, Tim, and great to see you again, Matt. And